very good afternoon for the minor semi-final of the National Soccer League. This is the Olympic chance against South Melbourne at Marconi Stadium in Sydney. Both teams here courtesy of victories in the elimination final. The victor today will take on Newcastle next Sunday. The controversial point is the surface, as it always has been all season, and the man closest to it will be Craig Foster. Craig, uh, work well for today. Any coincidence, yes, sir? I don't think so. I mean, both these sides... Uh, uh, tremendous footballing teams. Sydney Olympic in particular have played probably the best soccer that we've seen all season. They run a good surface. The majority of this park is in great condition. Well, now it's a little bit uh, bubbly, but I don't think that'll affect it too much. Well, head to head, South Melbourne are leading. They lead because of a 3 0 victory in round 22 down at the Bob James Stadium. Before that, they drew nil all, and that was an amazing game because the Olympic Sharks did not score. They had all the opportunities to put the ball in the back of the net and it just wouldn't happen. When they play well, Wadey, they're very, very hard to stop the Sharks. In particular, uh, that was a goal there. Uh, Jeremy Harris was disallowed, unfortunately, for the Sharks, but Ante Milicic in particular has been superb, just struggling across the goal there. He was a record buy for the Olympic Shark team and for the club, $110,000. They brought him from Sydney United this season and hasn't he been a revelation for them? He certainly has. Then they went to the Bob Jay Stadium in round 23, and this is what happened. 3-0 in the end, and the first one to Paul Trimboli in the 38th minute. Sekolovsky in the 47th minute. This is when Trimboli, Kovny and Buxianas were tearing them apart. Vaughn Kovny with a bit of icing on the cake. Yes, lovely little free ball for Kovny, and he finished them all day long. But the, the first two of those goals, Wadey, was the little master, Paul Trimboli. He'll be playing today. He's one for the, the viewers to watch. He's uh, over 14 years. He's probably the most consistently high-performing player that we've had in Australia. What about last weekend for the Olympic shot? Six goals to two. In fact, a record in elimination finals, and they start to get like that. Made all the more amazing because Joe Porter, one of the candidates for player of the season, scored the first goal in the game, right? His shots down one nil, but very quickly, Ante Milicic came back, rewarded his club for his endeavours, and a beautifully taken goal in the 18 yard box. They went on from there, it was a lovely little ball to the near post by uh, Lindsay Wilson, one of our better prospects going to PSV Eindhoven next season. They'll be looking for big things from him throughout this finals campaign. And this, what's this first strike from Jeremy Harris? That's an absolute wonder strike from all of 40 yards. We've been waiting for strikes like that for a long time. They play a lot of the good football. This is Andrew Mark ghosting in on the edge of the six yard box. He's a leader of all sorts from the touchline and on the park. And when Ante Militic scored that, it was five goals to one, basically all over. Yeah, so what's this for finished? Greg Owens, former young soccer rules. Fantastic talent. He's been, had a lot of injuries this season, but it's great to see him back on the path. There's the starting 11, and uh, there is no Labert, there is no Shroy, there is no McAllister, there is no Ishida. I'll tell you what, they've got, certainly got depth on this bench. Milicic has scored nine goals in his last eight games. He just might be the man to go to. South Melbourne, they won 2-1 last week against the Brisbane Strikers. To be expected? I think so. The, the Strikers had a, a wonderful year. They made the top six for the first time in a few years. But they were never really at the races last week against South Melbourne. South Melbourne have put on in the second half of this season what must be an almost record run of results. At one stage they were unbeaten in 11 straight matches. And once they get into the type of form that they showed here, they're simply irresistible. Paul Trimbala and Vaughan Company and Bitsy Arnest, the ones to watch out for. Strikers came back into the game late through Fernando Rock, the Brazilian star but it was all over from there. Just one chance to South Melbourne, out goes Lipperotti, unfortunately played superbly against Brisbane last week. In comes Panopoulos. Well, they, uh, they certainly know how to play finals football, these two teams. The winner today will create a record for the most number of wins in the finals. My Cockrell is in that commentator. And that will force the horrible international soccer league continues here at Marconi Stadium this afternoon. The Olympic Sharks in red-hot form after their record-breaking feats in last weekend's elimination final up against the form team in the country, South Melbourne, with just one defeat in their last 13 games. It's a return to Bosley Park as well for the South Melbourne coach, Eddie Kuncevich, his team marginal favourites for this afternoon's minor semi-final, but the Olympic Sharks hoping that home city advantage 
will carry them through. The man of the match last week then for the Sharks, Jeremy Harris, again lines up up front this afternoon alongside Ante Milicic, while well, South Melbourne will rely once again on their elder statesman, the likes of Vaughan Calvini, Convulsianis, and of course the irrepressible Paul Trimboli, who this afternoon makes his 400th appearance for South Melbourne. Here's Gary Phillips, the Olympic Sharks coach. It's been a difficult week for him in terms of injuries and preparation. Of course, the Sharks not keen to have this game played here at Bosley Park. They fought for the right to have the match played at Toyota Park, their home ground, but that was a battle they lost with Soccer Australia. So we're just moments away from the kickoff here in the minor semi-final for the loser this afternoon. The season is over. For the winner, a place in next weekend's preliminary final against Newcastle United. And there is Paul Trimboli as we welcome our viewers across the country on Channel 7. A special moment for one of the greatest players in the history of this game. Paul Trimboli making his 400th appearance for South Melbourne this afternoon. Trimboli is always wearing the armband for the four times National Soccer League champions. The man in the middle is Eddie Lenny. The referee from Perth in Western Australia. So it's going to be the visiting team who will get the match underway. Steve Panopoulos, who scored to the lineup this afternoon. Robert Liparotti goes to the bench. An unchanged Olympic Sharks first 11. And the fans have turned up in decent numbers. They're making themselves heard as well, including some three busloads of South Melbourne fans who travelled overnight from Victoria to lend support to their team this afternoon. It's an overcast afternoon in Sydney, but this controversial playing surface at Bosley Park in reasonable order. The grass has been cut short at the request of both coaches. So for two of the better footballing teams in the country, the pitch should not present too many problems. <laughs> South Melbourne, away from home, but with a good band of travelling fans to make themselves heard. Marginal favourites, as I said, Paul Ray, for this game. Is that the way you saw it? Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. They're playing some good football at the moment. They, uh, they won 6-2 last weekend. They, they must be coming into this with a brimming with confidence. And South Melbourne, who have had a wonder last second half of the season, really... When you look at the odds, they've got to come unstuck sometime, and it just might be today against this quality side. Sepulowski on that far side, tries to take on Lindsay Wilson. And Sepulowski gets possession back eventually. There's a problem behind play now for Trimboli, who's limping rather heavily after that challenge. As you would expect, some pretty ferocious tackles going in early in this match. It is final football, it is sudden death, and Craig Foster down there on the sideline. These are the sort of equations which every player wants to be involved in. No doubt, Mark, but I think you, you have to give clear favouritism to South Melbourne for my money. Not just because of the wonderful run they've had in the last 14 weeks, but also because of their team. They've got no less than eight players out here today, Mike, with experience of winning a championship. Jeremy Harris goes to ground after that tackle from Panopoulos. He just gets a quiet word in his ear from the referee. The free kick's been taken short by the Sharks. Yossifridis <laughs> goes long. Probably the only player forward for South Melbourne. Well, he's a rich player of form at the moment for Vaughan Coveney. Seven goals in his last six matches for South Melbourne. Going to right outside, Lindsay Wilson stretches his leg, hooks up, he's in the middle. Away the right is up. Well, the Sharks started like a house on fire last weekend. They're trying to do the same this afternoon.
watch the sweep up for the Olympic shots. Here's Llorente with his left thigh heavily strapped. And the ruling is a corner. Comes to the disappointment of Nenek Durakovic. So the shots for the first corner of the match. So we're pressing right to see Sydney Olympic in attack so early. In particular, the left back, Andrew Tapper, already finding himself hard and in the box twice in the first few minutes. Malcolm has the ball in the corner. Urich is very forward in the middle. Oh, uh, that's a Urich is free there. That goes down as a chance for the sweeper. A wide smile from Anta Juric. Probably as surprised as everyone else at the ball. Made its way through. No one attacking it in the middle. And Juric unmarked. Well, well, it's done better. He's definitely one of the best set piece takers in the country, Troy Halpin. And there's a perfect example of it, dodging and weaving, and Vaughn Cocky had no idea where it was going to go. They need Troy Halpin today with his free kicks. He'll cause South Melbourne some problems. That's the last thing South Melbourne needs to do, get free kicks away. Well, there's a collision between Harris and Durakovic. And the referee, first play can continue. But it seems to be the way all the referees are operating in this final series. Seen too many yellow cards, too many free kicks. Lauren, that's how most players like it. Although it is worth mentioning, certainly, that there are five players out there this afternoon who have already received a yellow card. One more. And they will miss the match next weekend as it goes to one of the team progresses. Straight to Wilson, who runs in the corner. Wilson tries to come inside, but again, no whistle from the referee. Well, great stuff. So as long as Eddie Lenny is consistent, I'm sure the players will appreciate this type of referee. Very good. But I think in, in that book, right there are both fouls. I can't understand them. I mean, a foul is a foul, regardless of normal season player finals. But uh, the overriding element, as you say, is all players want his consistency. If he's got a lot of bow for Olympic, he's got a lot of bow for South Melbourne. The Sharks have the free kick. This time it is a foul, and it is an opportunity for Troy Halpin. Once again, Yorch has gone forward for the Sharks. A deep ball from Halpin, right in the air. And one well by Packer. Marin attacking that near post area for Olympic. Well, I've been up and down this season, the Olympic Sharks. Many people regard them as the most exciting team on their day in this competition, but the results have not been as consistent as Gary Phillips would have liked. Nonetheless, they finished third in the regular season. Um, for uh, Gary Phillips, just taking a bit of exceptions with people who regard South Melbourne as favourites this afternoon based on Olympics regular season results. Now look, uh, I know they've only won two in their last six, the Olympic Sharks, but when you actually look and watch them play, they, they threaten from one end to the other. It might just be an incident that doesn't get them all three points in a victory. But with the quality of players out there, people like Tommy Paniak in the middle of the park, who is going to come screaming forward, and if he's not watched, he'll cause some tr troubles. You've got the man who scored nine goals in his eight games, Ante Milicic, their quality at the back, marshalled by Ante Juric. There is, uh, on their day, the Olympic Sharks will win this. It's just a matter of whether it's going to be their day. Well, obviously one of the key factors for the Sharks is to nullify South Melbourne's attacking trail. Interesting to see, but Gary Phillips has gone man on man. At the back, we see Jack Bird and Vaughan Carbony. We've seen Andy Durante and Sean Barley. And of course, we see other players picking up man on man. So he's taking a bit of a gamble there, Gary Phillips. In fact, it's Connor and Jim Barley, Durante and Putsiatis and Jack Bird and Carbony. That was the way it is. Set it up in a defensive situation for the Sharks. Uh, 
tried for by Russell Fogies at right snap. For Pernambuco, he's just keeps throwing her outside as the Avengers. Novak's coming in. Novak's having to tap into his pad. Pavan is required. Extremely strong in the air, as you know. Jay Burns, only a young lad, relatively inexperienced. But he has had a wonderful season, but he's been shifted around the pack. So they'll first go that front, mid for that on the back. It's a big day for him. Here goes Medjaka. Medjaka takes on Urich, still going. Let's see about Medjaka. And in the end, Jay Burns. Happy to just beat that run up over the half run line. There he is. Very versatile player for the Sharks, keeping an eye on Floyd Cavani for the afternoon. Happy job from Joe Porto in the elimination final last weekend. So sharp learning curves for Joe Porto. season long, but they have a valuable prize. Paul up has moved forward, but here's Harris. The Sharks now with their tails up. So Calvin having to regroup. And this time the whistle goes from referee Eddie Lilly. Another rudimentary challenge by North. Like we mentioned earlier, the match with Tor Parler, man marking Tor Chimbali. Excellent coaching move, I think. Chimbali is the lead man for South Melbourne coming out of defence. And already we see the long ball having to be in play. They've had no few troubles, and that's going to make a difference for them. Thank you. 
10 paces. Also in the coaching front, you've got a situation here where Gary Phillips has looked at South Melbourne, studied the way they play, decided to change his system to accommodate the opposition. Eddie Kronchevich instead has just persevered with playing the game that he's always played, playing the formation he's always played, playing the players he's always played. Yes, I think perhaps you can read in a lot about the recent results that they have had. I mean, South Melbourne have been on such a great run, Mike. It would be very, very difficult, wouldn't it, to justify changing the system in any way. And when you've got a power up for Austin Bowley, he plays him behind the strap as well as anyone in the country has over many years. You need to stick him in that hole. But I do like to see, I must admit, a man mark a put on players well from this because if he is able to control this game, and in many ways it's probably over. There's Austin Bowley. 14 years in the National League. Twice voted player of the year. Oh, my God! 
Andrew Wilson. Just getting his bra eyes crossed there, but he's already made an impact in this match, Luke Wilson. As we've mentioned, last season in Australia, but the end of the season. And the Tommy Bunyak, he scored once this afternoon. The space opened up in front of the door. Look, I hear the cliche, he's up for it, but I'll tell you what it applies to Troy Halpin today. He's been tracking back, he's been getting tackles in, he's always a whiz when it comes to free kicks. He's been controlling the middle of the park, Steve Monopolis and Madoka wouldn't have a clue where they're coming or going at the moment when he gets the ball. Gary Phillips must be a happy man. 20 minutes gone, it's Olympic one leading South Melbourne Hill. And he goes to goal score Pondiac. And he just got a point and touch too many there, Tommy Pondiac. Chris Lorbo. He's Jim Bowling. So uh, Melbourne gets a foot in. And the referee has ruled. That will be a free kick. Well, Troy Halpin's such a creative player with the ball, not necessarily renowned for his defensive work, but we've already seen a couple of important tackles from Halpin. And Kobe, the most likely target here for the free kick, but he does win it in the air. First with the clearance. Sikolovsky, but numbered, but he comes away with the ball. Ray Sikolovsky heading towards the corner. Decent cross as well. The Warby Lady still reaches to that. He's got three of pushing the back for Fausto Gil reaches. And the Sharks in a hurry to get things going. Wilson. Harris. Poor ball from Lindsay Wilson. Starting to open up. Very, very big gaps now appearing in midfield. Jim Bailey. Watched as always by Kona. He's made Doppa. Great Foster. The pace of this guy 
I was planning to tell on a few players already. Yes, it certainly has slowed down in the last few minutes. But it's Tom Pongo up for more money who's been superb in the, the opening stanza. But he gets the ball in open space and goes forward. He's very, very hard to stop. And it's really the left-hand side of South Melbourne that's finding problems at the moment. Fast idea Leach is having trouble with Lindsay Wilson. And Tommy Pongo up having a field goal. Gets the better of Milicic. Gets the feed. He tries to bring it down. Treat, aren't they, these Olympic sharks players in defence, they're tight, they're pulling shirts, they're kicking, they're upsetting the flow of the South Melbourne players. We've seen that on a number of occasions, a couple of times. If you play Gary did it to Newcastle, vice versa on Friday night, Newcastle did it to Perth and they come out with a result. take the knocks, there's no doubt about that. Uh, when you do take a knock, you don't let them know you're hurt. You certainly don't lie there. I don't care what's happened to you. You get up, you play on. That's unless you uh, are unconscious. Too much of it. Well, South Melbourne will have a free kick. 
I mean, it's been a bright start for Olympic, but uh, I guess quite first we'll be looking for a negative if you're looking for the shots. And that's a little bit. It's not really a part of this guy that's got a tough down score. He's been in the half a barrel trying to pronounce the lead. We see the improvement to uh, both the fire problem and the lead problem, and uh, he's not 100%. Well, I think he's certainly held the ball up well, bringing people well in to play his midfielders, which is really his strength. Well, Jeremy Harris is carrying all the load at the moment. Well, I think with Miritich, what they may have done, Mark, is essentially you're not 100% fit. Keep yourself more central, and Jeremy Harris seems to be doing all the work in the wide areas. So, Melbourne chasing an equaliser here at Marconi Stadium. A firm team in Australia just one defeat since the halfway point of the season, since the day that uh, Tom Bucianos returned to the club. <laughs> so they really are in a long South Melbourne, but they're going to have to do it the hard way if they're going to maintain that sequence. They're good enough, they've got the time. Here's the Docker. There are certainly a lot of supporters with the Olympic Sharks and they demand a lot, just like South Melbourne supporters, you can imagine how patient they've been. That's a long time to wait in between drinks and they've come out in force today to make sure that their club or their players out on the park know that they are being supported. Had too much work to do so far in this match. It's well as in the corner in towards that near post. But again, a sign of things can't go in as playing for South Melbourne. Now, you mentioned it now that Ante Milicic, the Olympic striker, not being too much in the game, and Frank Bortianis equally has, has been uh, a passenger for South Melbourne. At the moment, Gordon Puffle. Uh, 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 like you mentioned earlier about Anto Militic not being in the bank. Equally, Tom Bocianis has been a passenger for South Melbourne. Gordon Puffle at the moment, carrying all the load. I'll certainly be looking for Tom to get into the bank. As we mentioned, Bucianis really has been in so many ways the story of this season. Getting the headlines from his move to the Auckland Kings fell apart before the opening game of the season. He was in dispute with that club throughout the first half of the season. Couldn't work out a release, eventually re-signed by South Melbourne from Bucianis. But even then, the controversy continued. He wasn't supposed to play against the Kings. He did so. In his second start back at South Melbourne. He scored the winning goal. 
gotten a little bit. We had that sack with Bull Wright, which dragged on for month after month. Good South Melbourne, the got the three points. Would they get away with it? In the end, they have gotten away with it. Those points were enough to get them into the finals. Chris Yannis has continued to score goals ever since. Well, oh, Pat and Murray, you're quite right. They were basically relying on the Kings to make an issue of it, but the Kings were obviously looking after themselves. They want to remain in the National Soccer League. They're having a few problems of their own at the moment. So, yeah, very fortunate indeed, South Melbourne. They've played their, a couple of good cards. They've made sure that they're winning on the ground, but, boy, it could have been lost off the ground. There was no doubt about that. Well, I was there at that game when Kutsianis was not supposed to play. There was a Soccer Australia official who said so. And he carried on and got all three points, scoring a goal in the 87th minute. Karapolos, down the line, Mojaka. Squares it up, Dean Meaches. Thought about the shot pass of Dean Meaches, and he just put a hunting ball across the middle. As Bolton was able to shift a bit, run away for a goal kick, but we don't want to can't run about it, but in an attacking sense, South Melbourne struggled badly this afternoon. The triumvirate of Calvini, Butzianis and Trimboni not really in the game. Harris, beaten to the punch by Kiss Lorbo. Just over 10 minutes remaining in the first half. Sides for South Melbourne here, Mike. Steve Panopoulos starting to get on the ball. Massimo Mudaka, the young lad, also coming into the game. And also, Fausto Gilmich is doing a better job on Lindsay Wilson. And what about that for a pass by Troy Ralph? And it's the second 40 or 50 yard ball that he sprayed from deep in his own half. Panopoulos. There's Chimboli. Diamitris will sit in that full-back position and he'll wait for anybody charging down. I think he's got to change tact. I think he's got to go and mark Lindsay Wilson so that when he gets the ball, Crunch gets a tackle there straight away. Everyone in the middle, South Melbourne fortunate there. Michael Petkovic, even once. Already this afternoon. 
the ball, we've lost control of it. Brokerage did a lot, you pull out of the challenge. seen him with all sorts of mouth guards, bandages round his head. That was an ugly sight, there was no doubt about that, but I haven't seen him back out of one tackle. And when you're talking about defenders in soccer, if you've got somebody like that, it can not only win you the ball, but it can inspire the other ten men on the park to grab a hope. And that's what they need at the moment. They need a little bit of inspiration. Boy, does that hurt, but he will be back within... 30 seconds to do it all again. We'll be back. No doubt at all about that, Ronald Dorakovic. He will be hit it with a sledgehammer to take him out of the game. And although he's a bit worse for the wear, it looks as though it could be a hip problem. And if it all humanly possible, he will see that for 90 minutes. Before two, three minutes elapsed now in this minor semi-final, the scoreline leads the Olympic Sharks to South Melbourne Mill. It's a real wake-up call for the visitors. Favourites perhaps going into the match. Perhaps the Olympic Sharks are making a mockery of those sort of suggestions. They've been on top from the first minute of this match, Olympic. South Melbourne will now need something special. Position. It doesn't look good for South Melbourne at the moment, Paul Wright, but of course we can never discount the South Melbourne side. Plenty of time for them to get back into this one. We've seen it before, haven't we? You give them a 10-minute period, they'll score three goals, you look down at your shirt, it's covered in blood and you wonder what's happened. Now, uh, that sort of football team, you would never count them off until the 97th minute, and there's only 90 minutes in football. Well, we are now going into stoppage time at the end of this first half. What the Sharks will want to do is keep South Melbourne scoreless until the break. Equally, South Melbourne will realise that uh, if they do score in the next couple of minutes or so, the pendulum will probably swing their way psychologically. It's a key period of the game. This last few moments until half time. Ulrich. Monopolis. Tim Bowling. Looks up. Towards Coveney. And Coveney goes to ground. Comes up with a challenge. Too short by for Milicic. Monopolis again. Fitzianos trying to get away from Durante. And here's the Amicius. Yosefides. Has to slide it through in the docker. Gets a second bite of the cherry. Now a chance for Harris to settle, but trying to pressure it was Yosefides. And the Sharks will be in no hurry to take this free kick. There are so many things going right for the Sharks at the moment. When South Melbourne players get the ball with their backs towards goal, you've got midfielders coming back and trying to compete for the ball. You've got Ante Juric, who's playing in front of the two defenders, almost as a libero as opposed to a sweeper. And it's very difficult for Vaughan Company and Kambutianas to get any sort of room whatsoever to work their magic. Juric, that's right, he's north. Two minutes now added on by the referee, Eddie Levy. Well, the in the corner. Uh, the an Olympic throw. He's trying to last a few precious seconds here. The Sharks. Paul Trimbali. What's going through his mind is 400 game for South Melbourne. Also challenged that from Chris Norvo. Still 
Olympic performance in this first half. The majority of fans here at Bosley Park will be, of course, delighted with this scoreline. But the Sharks, a club who have known the bitter taste of defeat so many times in their history, they will not be counting their chickens just yet. So, Eddie Consulates, the South London coach, we need to produce some sort of inspiration during this half-time break. The key attacking trio for South Melbourne, Chimpoli, Pizzianis and Carvany, have been kept out of this game by the Olympic Sharks. And it's the Olympic Sharks who at the moment are looking good. If they do get through here, of course, this afternoon, that is what is awaiting them. The match next Sunday at the Energy Australia Stadium in Newcastle up against Newcastle United. It's the preliminary final. It picks up at 3 o'clock and that match will be brought to you live on Channel 7 and of course Channel C7 Sport at this Channel 42. So Newcastle beaten over two legs by the Perth Glory. The Glory straight through to the grand final. Newcastle though, they salvaged plenty of pride on Friday night at home. 17,500 fans willing them on. Osama Massey provided the perfect start. The free kick came in from Milan Blagojevic. And the fans started to get excited at this point when Massey added a second before the break. All of a sudden, it was the glory looking very fragile indeed. 2-0 on the night, 4-3 though on aggregate in the end. The glory got away with it. We're now across to Paul Ray. Very much, Mike. Yes, two home teams dominating this weekend. And it certainly is a picture here at Marconi Stadium. Ray Foster, what did you think about 45 minutes? Olympic shots were quite superb. Lindsay Wilson, Tommy Pony up, Troy Halpin. There's a number of the players out there today with Sharks who are having the best game for some weeks. They've got red all over the top of South Melbourne. It is a, a turn up for the form books, no doubt about it. Well, uh, I'll ask you why in a, in a while when we start to look at the highlights, but what about the fact that Convulsiana's ball club, the ball from Bali, are just not in the game? Is it tight mouthing now? I think it's uh, partly both things. Uh, the South Melbourne team has a group that's slightly off the pace. As we saw the other night with leaders Perth Glory against Newcastle. So just a couple of yards off the pace of Olympic Sharks here tonight. But those three are also being marked very closely. Andrew Giranti, a young lad, is looking after the ball company quite well. Probably seeing a lot of the ball, but he's not able to turn and get into open space as he loves to do. And while well, the little master Paul Trimbali is finding it very, very difficult to find space out there tonight. Well, the front third is a bit of a problem. He'd love to be Clint Bolton on a day like this year, wouldn't you? Because he's pinching a living. He's had very, very little to do, no doubt about it. I'd love to see Trimbali possibly go up front, Rady, and let Buziana strap up. And when you're being man marked so closely, you've got to take your mark away. He doesn't want to go. He wants to go in midfield. I'd like to see those two swap and see if Buziana's can get more joy out of the midfield for South. If we talk about midfielders, you talk about Tommy Fungio, 
and all the runs he's making. What about the quality of the run and even better, the quality of the finish? He's had a wonderful season, came up from the Knights down in Melbourne and he's uh, certainly he's not one of the favourites for the South Melbourne fans and didn't he love scoring this goal? Again, it was the man, Lindsay Wilson. He's had a great season. He's off to Holland to play in the professional trade for Tommy Pendulak. There's not many midfielders in this country now, Rady, who consistently get into the box and put good finishes on crosses. Tommy Pendulak's one of them. He's got a great partner in Troy Hadwin up here. Troy Hadwin, as I've said in the commentary, is up for it. He's, I haven't seen him work so hard in a long, long time. I agree. I think that goes for all of the Sharks players. It's probably the best game I've seen them play, both in terms of their, their passing that they're putting together, but also in terms of their commitment. They realise what it means to the Sharks Football Club here today. It's a real wake-up call for South Melbourne. If they don't come out in this second half and put on some type of stylish play, then it could well be over for them. Well, Troy Halpin is dangerous from normal play, but it's dangerous from set pieces as well. This is what happened in the 19th minute of the game. Well, Foster, dangerous from a set piece. I'm certain that uh, Eddie Contradict would have told his South Melbourne players, let's keep the fouls down to an absolute minimum around the edge of the box, but also at corners, because Ante Urich, the big defender coming up for Olympic Sharks, is so dangerous. Of course, it applies equally at the other end also, because Ben Bitsianis, what's for him in the second 45? If he gets a free kick, then it could be uh, one for South Melbourne. Is, it, but is that where they're losing it in midfield? It's two against two. The Doppler, Panopoulos, and uh, the two midfielders from the Olympic Sharks. I think certainly for the first half hour, there was no midfield battle. It was all Olympic Sharks. The Doppler's a young boy. He's had an excellent season. It's a big occasion for him. Steve Panopoulos, far more experienced championship winner. Last 15 minutes, he started to make his stamp on the game. But he found it difficult to get the ball. I think it was all about the willingness of the Sharks players to close down the South Melbourne midfield. What about the width now of the Olympic Sharks? Andy Packer, I believe, is up against two people, Leosafides and Sokolovsky down that side, and he's winning the battle, and he won it with this header. Yes, he did, and uh, again, it was a lovely delivery on the ball there, and uh, it could have been so much more, but certainly wide right of the park. Lindsay Wilson, we've said all season long, I think you said in the pre-commentary, if Olympic Sharks have their day, they're very hard to stop. And Lindsay Wilson is one of the most exciting players we've seen here for a few years. He is having his day. Now, how do you stop him then? Do you go tight? Do you make sure that uh, he doesn't get a first touch? The tackle is there. I, I agree with what you said. I think Diamichis has to get closer. But I've got a slight tactical problem, South Melbourne, because they're playing more or less a 4 3 1 2 system because Paul Trimbali is playing in behind the strikers. That leaves it only three across midfield. And when you've got Lindsay Wilson standing out wide and Kyla coming in behind him, so, so often, Diamichis has got two on one. So they're going to have to possibly change the system at halftime. Jeremy Harris, what a superb second goal. He took it well. And, uh, well, when you talk about strikers, he told me earlier in the season that he loves to play striker. He loves to score goals. Well, the thing about uh, Jeremy is that he can play all over the park. He plays in midfield quite often. He's pos possibly too versatile for his own good. But he's shown in the last few weeks an absolute stunner of a goal last week from all of 40 yards. And this was a lovely finish. The ball was slightly behind him. We mentioned Troy Halpin's free kick. Absolute pinpoint perfection. It was brought back in by North. And this wasn't an easy chance by any nature. It was a lovely header at the far post. So they work on free kicks a lot, obviously. I mean, we always talk about Parramatta. David Mitchell working hard, but obviously you're here at the Olympic Sharks. They must work just as hard. Well, look, when you've got a uh, free kick exponent of the likes of Troy Halpin, who I guess Tom Butzianis is more of a specialist around the box. Troy Halpin is, is really of a very high standard everywhere. He can deliver balls from out wide, from deep, as we've seen earlier today, and that one from not too far outside the box. When you've got someone like him waiting, it's easy to work on free kicks. Let's go back in time to the 1989 game, minor semi-final between these two teams, and just recap what happened there. I'm sure a lot of the viewers will certainly pick up a few names. And, uh, well, there he is right now. It's, uh, <laughs> it's just one of the, well, all these faces, they've all got hair. It's a scary thought. It is, Wade. Right there's a uh, one uh, pre raid in here somewhere. I'm certain running around for South Melbourne in the six jersey. Just around the six yard box there, but it's an excellent finish by Marco Perenovic. He was having an excellent season. And, of course, uh, club CEO Peter Lestopoulos, who was coach at the time. Well, I think you'll uh, see the white shirt. It was the only pass I actually played to a South Melbourne player that didn't get cut out. But there we were absolutely thumped that night. 
unfortunately hit the back of the net. Uh, I guess a lot of people, we should do more of that, shouldn't we? We should uh, be a little bit nostalgic and go back in time, see some of the champions. Well, you would say so, Randy, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, we have to honour our champions, and in soccer we so often don't do that. It's something that the players have got together and identified. We want to do it more. Bring in the Warrens and the Marstons and bear us out the road. So let's hope that it's, uh, we go more on that in the future. Uh, let me just ask you a question off the cuff. Who do you think our greatest soccer or uh, greatest Australian player has ever been? Uh, that is a tough question, but for my money, I think the, the feats of both Johnny Warren and Joe Marston are very hard to split. But Marston may just show it because of his work in the early 50s with Preston North End. He made the, I think, English League 11, which uh, you're going back you know, well over 50 years now. Um, and at that time, if you can imagine the English League 11 now, would be worth you know, well over 200 million pounds, if not half a billion. Um, there were no less illustrious names at that time. So for Joe Marston to, to do that at that time, marvellous effort. I guess he was only earning 10 quid a week as well. Uh, I guess he'd be looking at today's professional footballers and thinking, if only. Yes, uh, I, I know Joe quite well. I spent some time with him. He's he, a, a lovelier man you couldn't find and, and his lovely wife either. But look, he's a, a, a massive soccer supporter and that's what thrills me so much. The guy is, well, he was voted player of the century last year for Australia for soccer rules. Um, he, but he loves the game. He watches every game on telly. He keeps in touch with the players. He's, he's just a, a, a lovely, uh, a lover of the code. Absolutely. Uh, nostalgia. We look forward to seeing more of those in the near future. Now, Kirk, was your next commentator. Well, South Melbourne, the first team out from the dressing room in preparation for this second half because they have a huge task in front of them. They're eager to get on with it. Paul Trimboli, his 400th match this afternoon for South Melbourne. It hasn't been his day so far, but still plenty of time to turn things around. So there is Paul Trimboli. As we mentioned, a difficult first half for this champion player. I'm sure Eddie Krenjevich, the South Melbourne coach, asking the likes of Trimboli and Calvary on your screen there. Also, Kambutianos, to do more in the second half, saying something like, we need you to stand up here. We're 45 minutes away from elimination. The Olympic Sharks doing their job to perfection in the first half. There he is, Eddie Krenjevich, a former soccer league great himself in his first season as coach of South Melbourne. Last year he spent here at Bosley Park in charge of Marconi Stallions. It was a difficult season for South Melbourne over well, the first half of the season. It's been fantastic ever since. But is that run coming to an end? The Sharks leading 2-0. The second half has begun. No changes made by either coach during the break. The tactical battle, you'd have to say, was won by the Sharks in that first half. It will be interesting to see if South Melbourne adjust in any way in the second half of this game. Milicic is hoping. Now with Tony Pondiak, takes a shot. Passed about three or four times on its way through to the goalkeeper. trying to shrug off the attentions there of Van Du Durante, saying that he was held, but the referee having none of it. It's been a bold gamble by Gary Phillips taking this formation into the game for the road, and you have to pay credit the road's paid off so far. You know, I've spoken to Ron Corey in the past. There's Gary Phillips, and he says he refuses to put a man on Paul Trimboli. Ron Curry is the coach of the Wollongong Wolves, who were the current NSL champions. He says that the reason is trimmers can drag you all over the park and uh, really tear you apart on his own. This is a one-on-one -on -one situation. They're going tight, they're going man-to-man, -man, and it seems to be working. I wonder if Ron Curry will look at it now and change his mind. He's back on the ball. Looks up for Olympic. Kiss Norbert. Oh, 
himself up and do need more. Oh, 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 Wilson, out of hand in the first goal, striding forward. Two matches times his tackle well on this occasion. Lindsay Wilson takes the throw. Troy Halpin loses his footing. The Sharks have it back. Wilson, the ball in the middle. Just I didn't know too much about that. Rather relieved, in fact, the rocket run didn't go into his own goal. He just stuck out a boot there, Patrick Kisnorba. Could have gone anywhere. Well, unfortunately, for South Melbourne, they are probably top of the goal. It's going to be a corner now for the Sharks. Number one will take it. <laughs> Great shot by Pontiac, cleared by Chris Norbo. Well, you would imagine the Olympic Sharks in a buoyant mood at the moment. Run on the sideline, the assistant coach John Doyle, and uh, John Doyle, the first half, pretty well went perfectly in your plans. Yes, it did, Michael. We're very, very pleased with this first half, and we're just hoping we can uh, continue this, uh, you know, star play. How important that we've talked about it a lot in the front. If you haven't heard it, has been this man Mark and his three players picking up the direct opponents for you. Listen, we've been trying to work on that all year, uh, you know, Michael, and at last we start these young people to start to realize that if you, if you mark very good players tight, they don't seem to be quite as good. Gary Phillips said during the week he disagreed with people who thought South Melbourne were favourites going into this game. Is that any source of motivation for the team, the fact that a lot of people were writing you off? Well, that's been used as a motivational uh, tool for a week, but the players still have great respect for this team, and uh, they know they've got to be very close to their best performance to match them. Well, just finally, John, the, uh, the plans for the second half. Well, we're having uh, for, for, for playing almost the same sort of style of tactics to get in uh, a very close marking, but we need to start threading the ball around and uh, make them play catch up. That's what we're looking for them to do. So if we can last uh, 15, 20 minutes, they'll have to change the style. Well, thanks for your time, John Doyle. You're welcome, Michael. Well, the first yellow card of the game, Jake North there. Oh, it's not a bad. A bit of game for Sid really. There's been that here in Parvany all afternoon. And cut one from Parvany midway through that first half. He's given a bit back at the moment. Here's Tim Bowling. Ned Gottman. Ned to go inside. They're almost afraid he's dealing with the trouble. Come up this again. And they have to score it early as well, because the way the Olympic Sharks defence is playing, they're not going to be broken down easily. It might take a bit, bit of a bubble. Patsianis in the corner. That's the first time pass, but we'll get it right. In fact, that's been the story of the afternoon so far for South Melbourne. Nothing really has gone right. Joining us on the sideline, assistant coach Jeff Holman, but a far first half of your team, Jeff. Yeah, it's not, uh, hasn't been good, but uh, we're just going to keep working around. Hopefully we can get one and uh, change the whole game, but we just haven't found any rhythm at all. And, uh, you know, to Olympics credit, I mean, they're very mobile in the first twice. Were you surprised with their tactics, putting a man on each of your attacking three players? No, I mean, I mean, we've been doing a lot of damage. I mean, Gary's got his reasons for what doing what he's doing at the moment. It's working, but we'll have to look at trying to make a couple of changes, trying to break that up. How are the spirits in the dressing room at half time? Well, we are cliche, right? Mark. Tim is a dangerous scorer, so we feel we're still in the game. We've got to get one probably in the next 10 or 15 minutes, and then we can go for break and hopefully get the second one. I'm well, just quickly any questions I'd like to say about the surface here. But now, Tony, how's it going as far as the team's concerned? Well, the surface isn't a problem. I mean, there's, I mean, there's been a lot said about the surface, but as far as we can see, the surface is fine. Apart from having a goal, it's a little bit hard, but everything else is fine. All right, Jeff, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Mark. Jeff Oliver, assistant coach at South Melbourne, former soccer week. It's not a situation I used to at the moment, Paul Ray. The last half of the season, everything has gone right for South Melbourne. Well, this half 
wants to play today. Certainly Lindsay Wilson, Andy Packer out wide have torn them apart. Tommy Pondeliak through the middle. You look at those blue shirts and you really can't fault any of them. Well, Anti Miller just goes into the mud for four for the ball away. What a silly action there from Miller. Here's Calvin. Sometimes in that wide position you get sucked in like this. Now he's got to de do some defending. Wilson puts the ball into the middle. Here goes Packer. Still Packer. The save came from Petkovic. Don't get past the ball and save from Andy Packer. But Michael Petkovic, that may turn out to be a decisive stop from the goalkeeper. But Wilson got the ball in the middle. Packer with a better cavity. Back to Dolphin. Dolphin. Full corner from Hilton, but the 
Sharks have a back for Bondiak. Oh, Tommy Bondiak again, blazing over the top. So a good flurry this from Olympic. We're looking to make certain of the outcome. I know how important a third goal will be. Hasn't come as yet, but things are looking good. goes back to his goalkeeper. But interesting about reshuffle from Fossil with Bloom Cardi now playing on the right hand side of midfield for South Melbourne. How they losing a lot from being on back track and reshuffling their attacking line up back for home. I think it's clear he has to make changes. Uh, no doubt, but it's uh, very interesting, isn't it? We've just come to the line up and I just wanted to say Fox and Bale is going up back. I've got uh, Convincianus back into the hole. It's a good move, try and get him on the ball. He is one of their better creative players. And he's still been keeping a go forward. And Coach Bailey, as good as he is, he's not the fastest man in this league. But playing everything in front of Sharks in the first 45 and still now, I think it's too comfortable for the Sharks. I love to see him put some balls over the top, going in the hand. But there's an important tackle for Patrick. Chimbali, danger here for Olympic. Chimbali! Well, the Olympic Sharks, guilty there. From their own defensive area, a couple of errors from the Sharks presented the half chance for Trimboli, and that will do his confidence the world of good. A little bit of complacency perhaps creeping in there for Olympic. You cannot dominate a game for 90 minutes. Now, it's the 10 or 15 minutes that South Melbourne have that will decide this game. It might come, that might be the start of it. It might take another 10 or 15. But it will come, and uh, I think it's the Vaughan Cobney and uh, Batchak situation that will force the issue. They're playing out wide, they're going to tie up Lindsay Wilson, and they're going to tie up Andy Packer, and that just might give them that little bit of, uh, of ascendancy to go forward now. Paul Mitchell, inside is Podopolis. South Melbourne starting to string together a few passes. They've got half an hour or so remaining. Trimboli is still playing the offside flag. So Andy Pekovic has shuffled his pack. He's looking for inspiration. A key period of the game. But Logan trying to find their rhythm. Perhaps just a couple of signs that the Sharks have dropped off. Probably Pekovic which has been around long enough to sense what's happening out there. running out of time to score the goal. Well, that's it, isn't it? I mean, you, if you're going to get beat 2-0, you may as well get beat 4-0 and at least know that you've gone out there and thrown your cards on the table. But the ball has got to be played to Vaughan Cogney and Patrick. If you're going to have a goal like him, there we are, there's a situation there. Now he's got to have a goal again. Talked about what South Melbourne would have done to adjust. What a move for Joe Burke is that he is now picking up his opposite number, Joe Butchak. It's a couple of good moves for the Sharks because North, one of the few players he could probably keep up with Butchak in terms of speed. Here's Butchak. Here's the corner. North gets a tackle in. He plays out the line. And in space with time is Wilson. This game now stretching. So 70 metres or so now between both defences. Tony uh, is ridden into the ground. Uh, Andy Packer. That's what Eddie Klinchevich is looking for. Good on you, Steve Panopoulos, for playing the ball early and forcing Andy Packer to make a tackle. Because if he hadn't, he would have been running backwards even quicker once Brown got the ball off him. Well, with Brown Cavity, a difficult match for him so far. 
said this game is opening up. There are at times now 70 yards between the defence at one end and the defence at the other and to play in that sort of midfield is an absolute nightmare. Well now the Sharks go to their bench and it's going to be a early night for the goal scorer Jeremy Harris. And on comes Greg Allens. So that is a sign of faith really in Anthony Milicic who is clearly struggling for fitness but he stays on the park, Harris goes up, Collins, a very lively young player, there's about 24 minutes or so to make the impression. So what Gary Phillips will want from Greg Owens is just run himself ragged for the rest of this game. Well, he wanted, or well, South Melbourne wanted to go early in the second half. I haven't got it. 
Is there still time for the visiting team? Is there else time, Mike? There's just over 23 minutes to go. There's plenty of time. If we come in the last couple of minutes, particularly in a minor semi-final, anything can happen later in the game. As you said, legs start to try. There's still plenty of match winners out here on the Slack Melbourne side. Make no mistake. It's not over just because they're not playing at the top of their game. I'm sure uh, that uh, Eddie Cox will lose his entire bench. Make sure he gives them every chance. A few basic mistakes taking into the Harley for Olympic. It's uh, Melbourne with most of the possession. They have to make something of the game. That was not going to help matters. So they pass to Panopoulos. No further action this afternoon for Paul Trimboli in his 400th appearance for the club. Miles Jones don't count for much. Sentiment does not come into professional football, obviously. It's uh, been a tough day at the office for Paul Trimboli. The service has been a bit ordinary. And there is uh, no doubt that he will regret the performance over all of his football team, not only of him as an individual, but they've been run into the ground by this Olympic shark side, as opposed to playing badly themselves. They've been forced to play badly by these blue shirts. Well, it's the substitute Lipperotti who has gone up front. He's played as a defender, a midfielder, and now Lipperotti is going to spend the remainder of this match as a target man. So once again, Andy Kocevic is trying to liven things up, and once again, the Sharks will have to adjust their politics is tricked on the way through by Yosafidis. Again, I mean, he's forced to run a bit quicker. He was tracked by Tommy Pavlyak. All right, you might blame the ground, you might blame fatigue, but there's a blue shirt every time the South Melbourne players get it, breathing down their neck. Well, the patience perhaps now has worn thin for Teddy Frenchovic. And again, he makes a change. It's a defender in Diametrius who goes up. Again, can't get the better of Durante. 
Well, it's been switched to Yasafridis. Plenty of right shots in the middle now. Down the line is Coveney. Danger here for Lindy. It's a costly good one. And Bolton thought about getting there. Couldn't do so. Just needed someone to attack it. That's our Bolton. Batchak has it. Squeezes the ball inside Joe Batchak. But mistakes have been made by the Sharks. And there is a crunching tackle from Saviak. Um, Olympic will get a free kick, which I'm sure they will be a no hurry to take. No change to the half-time score. Still the Sharks to South Melbourne. No. Larry Phillips, the Olympic coach, has made the brave decisions this afternoon in a tactical sense. And so far, it's paid off brilliantly. Philopolis. To Rapovic. Space here for Lipperotti. Melbourne. 
disappointing so far at the moment. We've made the changes. I guess Paul Wade, when you looked at the opening five, ten minutes, you saw that Luciano's coming into the morning all up that game, aside from that good for the visiting team. It wasn't good at all. Scored out of the 27 goals they've scored since Pizzianos, Vaughan Covney, and Paul Trimboli have been together. They've scored 21 of them. And when you take that factor into consideration, you kill those three, you basically kill South Carolina. They won't stop running, the rest of the boys. But they uh, just haven't got the same class as those three put together. Well, that's three good goals against Huntley. It's been taken quickly. Petkovic, Del Cooper, spreads it wide to Chris Norbo, here's Panopoulos. Here's Durante. Uh, and he had a short tap there, Andrew Durante. It's really been a down for a while. Wade, he muddies the ball into the strikers and a very little support from behind. The Sharks have won the midfield battle. They've stayed close to the South Wales and midfielders have been able, unable to pick simple balls up from their strikers and go forward. Wilson wins it in the air. Durakovic with the clearance. Here's Ben Dumba. And they've had enough of the ball South Wales, but they have not finished the Sharks. And Dumba. Yosefides. Dangerous ball in the middle, but Bucky is watching it fall to right. <laughs> Just only ten minutes left in this minor semi final. And it's the home team still in control. Slap Melbourne. Huffing and puffing, but they just can't blow this half down. Yosafidis. Still going Yosafidis. Here's Little Rotti. Bacha. It's a ball into the middle. And Jade North. Well, how lucky is that when those sort of things happen, you know it's going to be your day. We knew nothing about that, Jade North. Stuck out a leg, could have gone anywhere. Came off his knee. Straight back to his own goalkeeper. Owens, what a challenge from Chris Norbo. McAllister forces it wide. He's mostly quick enough to get there. Yes, he is. Owens. It's often the little things which uh, give you an indication of how a game is going to go. And that incident there with Jake Norfolk. But if that was the other end of the park, it probably would have been an own goal. It's more than likely the way it's going for them today. But I think, uh, as they say, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Uh, when you're just finding these days, particularly in finals, that the side is more committed, more willing to run and close down players. And through the top side, it's the way they get to the top. Took it on his own there, and got an unmarked McAllister to his left. Well, look at the gaps now in midfield. Bacak. Durante. Stretches. Gets the ball forward. Here's Papa. A little danger here for Olympic for Wade. Because they've really lost their shape a little bit. They're leading 2 0. They just need to keep their composure and their shape. And then this game should be in the bag. There's no need for them to force the pace. We've got four players that can forward in blue shirts. Psychologically, they are high, aren't they? And when you are that high and you know that deep inside you that you're going to the next round, you're going to Newcastle on um, next Sunday. It can be a problem to keep your emotions under control. And sometimes you don't think about what your job is, you think about 
a week's time when they will go through to that preliminary final. But at the moment, I look at South Melbourne and I think, well, if the Olympic Sharks look disorganised, then I think South Melbourne, when they get into that front third, wouldn't have a clue what they're going to do next. They have run out of ideas. Yosafridis towards Bitsianis, who wins it. Lipperotti, still Robert Lipperotti. Back track, sets it up for Yosafridis. Gets his wires crossed. And here goes Wilson. Only a screaming forward saying, come on, bring the ball. And that is what I'm talking about, Dave Foster. That will do Gary Phillips no good at all. Now that's right, it's a poor final ball, and that's what's letting him in the second half. But I don't think he'd be too concerned, Mark. I think the more they have the ball coming out of the fence, and let's face it, even as South Melbourne go forward, they're not really threatening in the box, so the press is coming in high. Clint Bolton is very, very comfortable. Ante Ulrich, at this point in the second half, hasn't even raised the sweater, sweeper of the Sharks. He'd be happy for them to go forward in the open space, hold the ball. If they can get a little bit more quality on the final pass, they could easily get another ball. Yes, the feed is some tired strides there for Steve. Yes, the feed is. Panopoulos chips it in. To the touch of Cavani. Well, I'm happy to see that one over the line. It's going to be a goal kick to the Olympic. Well, Gary Phillips makes another change. You can hear the Olympic fans turning his name. And he loving the bitch to a helper. And he's got a fine job for his team this afternoon. He's been superb to a helper. As I said earlier in the game, he really came out on fire today. He's been closing down everything. If there's been one criticism of him through the years, I think it's been his application at the ball. Doing a tough work, because we know he's got the creative ability, but today he's really left to the front. Owens. Wilson. Still going, Edgy Wilson. Well, oh, the front and front is going through to Greg Owens. There was an open goal in front of him. It's the honest. Ray McShroy staying with Lucianus all the way. <laughs> Owens. Ewich. Here's McAllister. <laughs> just over five minutes, or just less than five minutes remaining, plus stoppages. Well, I think now they've got no option, South Melbourne. I think Vaughan Coveney's got to go and stand right in the middle of the 18-yard box at the attacking end. Where Get Lippa the two big fellas in the middle, bang it in the mixer. Absolutely. That's your favourite call and mine too. Just get it in the mixer. Whatever comes up, well, if you win, lose by 2-0 or you might get one back, who knows? I've seen goals scored late in games, especially this season. Which one goes down the line. Lipperotti. Again with Batchak, but he was in an upside position as he received that pass. Sharks can now taste it really, a place in the preliminary final in seven days' time. Oh, Phillips knows the quality of this South Melbourne side. He knows all about their experience, including in finals, so he won't be assuming anything until the final whistle. But South Melbourne fast running out of time to do something about this result. 
They were looking for an early goal in the second half. They didn't get it. And we're now in the last few minutes of the match. It will take a miracle from here. Durakovic. Now comes Bolton. A long, long way out the goalkeeper. Durakovic again. Gossifidis, three on the right. Putting his body on the line. Up from a full hit. Here's Owens. Shrewy. Coming up close long. Sabia. Also Freddy boxed in, but Jack is jumped right back to the halfway line. Now Kiss Norbo. Lipperotti. He did well to make the space for Robert Lipperotti, but it's cross. Makes the lead up work. And when he decides to think that we're going to be there, and keep an eye on you, don't want you to start wasting too much time. sort of season has it been for South Melbourne? Well, it's been a surprise, really, for, for most of us in the league now because they started so poorly. That was surprising for a champion team, but they have experienced players out. And always from the very day those players got back in, when Bucciano's returned from Bowie and Coveney returned from injury, they've been unstoppable. So I think in the final analysis, uh, Betty Crunch with his hand on heart, he'll say that he's been very pleased with the return out of the season, considering the way that they began. The first half of the season was all the but they'll be disappointed today with their performance, Mark, no doubt. I think in, as they look over this tape, it'll be the transition and the service that they've given them or haven't given them their front end that will be the more disappointed to them. They haven't stretched the Olympic Sharks at all. They haven't got in behind them. They haven't made them run. They, they have not looked and they anti euro for his money today. Of course, it really has been an amazing second half of the season for South Melbourne. Stone Loverless last at the turn of the season for South Melbourne. No team has come from that position and made it this far, so in that sense it's been a marvellous season for South Melbourne, but it looks as though it is about to come to an end. We're into stoppage time. Still the Sharks with that two-goal cushion. Here's an opportunity for Buzianis. Finally a free kick within range. <laughs> Buzianis, awkward bounce for Bolton, it's away for a corner. Mm -hmm. in a hurry to take it. Hasn't been beaten so far for Bolton. For Buzianis, out comes the goalkeeper in some heavy traffic. And Wilson comes away with it. Three on the right is Owens. Still with Greg Owens. Wilson goes outside. And that is deflected away for a corner. Well, I'll call it what you like. Headful exuberance, over enthusiasm. A lot of teams in that situation play fast with a slow to go down, headed towards the corner. The Olympic Sharks still looking to go. Sensational effort. Quincy Wilson, congratulations. He must be so proud. He told me to hold his crowd up and see the people who found that goal caught on the break. He's found the second up to make the one around his other player to make the overlap out wide. 
tremendous effort, a tremendous effort for his team for that. I think he's been a real hero. Olympic fans now in full voice. Well, well it's only seconds away. The final whistle. A look at the watch there from Eddie Henny. South Melbourne. Look a beaten side. Liberati has pulled one back. Robert Liberati. The substitute has grabbed the goal for South Melbourne deep, deep into injury time. There's a ball that stretched him out right now. Got in behind him. It's one of the few times we've got a cross into the six yard box. And he's got four timber left with the run. He realized it's going to be a chance. It's just a little bit too late. Well, a little bit just helping to keep position now and run down the clock. Here goes Owens. Well, Owens. Trying to head towards the corner. That's where Lindsay Wilson wants to go as well. South Melbourne have it back. A little bit of cut that position. Here's Madoka. Pontiac keeping up with him. It's going to be a throw. Three and a half minutes added on by Eddie Lenny. Driven in by Kiss Norbo. Germany has won it in the air. Hewitt appears for handball. Not given. No penalty. And there is the final whistle. Olympic are through to their first grand final in 12 years. They look like they were going to do it comfortably. And a last gasp goal from Lipperotti. Wait for a few anxious moments. In the end, though, the Sharks will be winners. South Melbourne, the season is over. The Sharks live to fight another day. The full-time score here at Marconi Stadium. The Olympic Sharks 2, South Melbourne 1. So some dejected South Melbourne players, but there are the delirious Olympic fans. It's been a long, long time between drinks for Olympic. Just one championship in their history. Twelve years ago, when Gary Phillips was a player, he's now the coach, and the Sharks are on the threshold. No wonder Anto Juric is smiling as the players come across to accept the congratulations of their supporters. The Sharks have ended the miracle run of South Melbourne and now go on to next weekend's preliminary final where Newcastle United await. A victory this, which is a tribute as much to the coach as the players, you have to say that. Gary Phillips, gamble, and his gamble has paid off. We'll now go down to the sideline and pull right. Thank you very much, Tom Brumman, who has actually put in every ounce of energy, I'm sure, and a goal scorer, the man who set it up, Tommy Padilla. Tommy, uh, what about that first goal? Uh, surprised that you actually first touch was superb? He was actually the, uh, the goal now. Now it's not the best surface at the moment, but um, yeah, I mean Andrew Packer went for the ball and they just told him to dummy it, and I was, I was really surprised he came to my feet and luckily that, that touch just went half a yard, and I just had to, had to go for it with the left foot, and lucky for me, he just he went in, you know. Where did all the energy come from today? You, you never stopped running, and neither did anybody in the team. Well, uh, we've had it all with you a week. I mean, people have been. Honestly, it doesn't matter how much of a favourite we were, even I think was riding and stuff. And I think South Melbourne had the wrong mentality today. They, they were riding on the wave and they thought that was enough to get them through. But we just wanted to prove everybody wrong that, that we can't play football. And I think we just closed it down in the first half. Congratulations. Thanks very much for your time, Tom. Tommy Pondley, I can wait to have a power of work in the middle of the park. Were you surprised how hard and how fast they came out in about the first 45? 
No, not at all, I mean, we had a taste of it when we played in the last time down above Jane. I mean, they're a good team. They're full of energy, full of running, and they're pretty hungry today. They didn't give you much time on the ball, did they, man for man? No, nah, they closed us down. I mean, we didn't never really got into gear, but I mean, they didn't let us. You know, they put us on the back foot. But credit to our boys, they kept bragging away, and you know, we got some for at the end. But a little too late. What about your 400? Uh, I guess you've got some great memories there. Yeah, I mean, I'll think about it later, lady. You know, at the moment we're disappointed. You know, we're hoping to win today, but it wasn't our day. They'll tune us today. Congratulations on your season, especially the second half. Thanks for your time. Bertrand Bowley, the captain and 400 gamer for South Melbourne. A lot to be proud of, but I think that is well today. Certainly will hurt him because he's a dual championship winner, lady. He knows what it takes to get through these finals. He disappointed a little bit in himself today, but particularly in his team also. As he said, they were out fought by Sharks today. Tactics from Sharks were spot on from Gary Phillips also. Putting a man on Trent Bowley, and if you stop him, we'll go a long way towards stopping South Melbourne. Well, it's all the two teams we've got for you next Sunday. Well, that is a superb game if I've ever seen one. If they could just repeat the form they showed this weekend, it's on Sunday, live at 3 o'clock in the afternoon from Energy Australia Stadium, Newcastle United, who knocked up Bill Thierry and the Olympic Sharks, who've beaten South Melbourne today. It's all action here on C7 Sport. We hope you're enjoying the final series. We look forward to your company on Sunday. Good night.